Good evening, Kathy Beatty here with Divorce Support Anonymous. It's Friday night, nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's time for me to jump into your life and to give you some encouragement, some words of wisdom, some help, some tools as you proceed through the trauma of divorce. I'm very glad that you're here tonight. I hope it's going to be, in fact, I know it's going to be beneficial to you as we cover the topic when you're doubting your decision to divorce. Wow. Every one of us feel that at one time or another. So we want to discuss that this evening. I also want to let you know that you can ask your questions. I have a guest joining me and you're going to have um, access to some real expertise tonight. Along with myself, I have uh, attorney Peter Letzman joining us. But before he comes in, I do want to uh, encourage you to ask questions of him, of myself tonight. Also, I want you to know support groups are beginning. The next session is beginning the 19th if you are in the Grand Rapids area and April 20th if you are anywhere else in the world with internet. So we're going to go 10 weeks in person. We're going to go 12 weeks uh, online because I found that we have a shorter time together and we need to go a little longer uh, to cover all that we need to cover. So Connect with me for registration form. There is a fee there, but trust me, it is well worth it and incredibly inexpensive. Let me also share with you a workshop that I am doing. Let's see if I can find it here. Here we go. Preparing yourself for mediation webinar. That is on March 29th. This, the end of this month, it's going to go for three hours. The cost is $39. I am going to walk you through all you need to know to prepare yourself for seeing your attorney for the first time and getting ready for mediation. Being a mediator, I can give you some information that is going to save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money, and is going to help you feel comfortable as you go into the process. So connect with me for a registration form, preparing yourself for mediation, for divorce, for mediation and divorce. I've got so much going on right now. I can't hardly keep it all straight. So there you go. If you have questions, please, please let me know. So let me go back here to what our topic is this evening. When you're doubting your decision to divorce and let me introduce you to Mr. Peter Letzman, who is an attorney who has under his belt many years of practice. He is not a divorce attorney. However, he is a domestic mediator. And being an attorney, he knows how the courts work. And he also has probably done over a thousand or 2000. I don't know. I've lost count. I don't know if you count them, Peter, at all. But you have done a ton of mediations. You know this world. You have seen so much. And so we are fortunate to have you this evening. Thank you, Peter, for joining us. Kathy, thank you for inviting me. But not only have I had the uh, opportunity to observe and work in the mediation process, I've been <clears throat> able to observe the parties to the mediation, the dynamics between the husband and the wife, uh, maybe what brought them to the divorce and what allowed them to maybe uh, settle the case, what got in the way. And I think that's what we're we're uh, t talking about tonight: the decision to to uh, to divorce and where we go, how we do that, how do we affirm the decision once we make it? Yes, and Peter and I have um, held mediations together. Sometimes you do that. Primarily, we work alone now, but we have in the past done mediations. And there was one mediation that I just is coming to mind now, Peter, where we walked into the room. And the woman said, I really don't want a divorce. And then we walked into the gentleman's room and he said, I just can't live like this. And we ended up doing a stay married mediation, but they both had made the decision to work on it. And that is made all the difference in the world. So we did work with them for oh, a little over a year, I believe it was maybe two years um, to help them work out the issues and they had a contract that they were working on. So that's an option. However, there are many of you who are making the decision to divorce. And I want to cover four, four different points 
this evening, and I'm going to cover some, and Peter's going to cover some as well. Our first point, when you are doubting your decision to divorce, because there are so many emotions that go on in our heart and our head as we're divorcing. We see what it's doing to the children. We see what it's doing to us financially. We see all that's um, that's happening as a result of the divorce. How And so it's very easy because of all this confusion to rationalize in our mind and say, oh, we should just get back together. We should just resume marriage and somehow we'll work it out. Well, this is the time. I would wish that for every person that I come in contact with. But this is a time when you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with the truth. Is this marriage salvageable? Is he or she going to come together and work on this marriage? Now, there's many times, many stories of the love bombing that takes place and people say, no, no, I'll change anything. Let's stay together. But you have to be honest. What has happened so many years in the past, not just the last year, but maybe decades have happened in the past. You have to look at this objectively. Is he or she going to change? What is the status of this marriage? And to be honest is huge. And you may not even be able to do that on your own. You may need some help in doing that. So point number one is how can you be honest? If this marriage is dead, it's dead. But how can you be honest with yourself? So the next point I want, which is really dovetails well with this, is being realistic. And Peter, I'll have you speak to this, to this topic. And that really flows from honesty. It's to be realistic is can you perceive the facts that you are dealing with as they really are, truthfully are, honestly are, or do you perceive the facts as you wish them to be? Too often we wish them to be maybe not as bad as they are. Maybe we wish them to be even worse than they are. If you're really convinced that you, you want to stab your ex in the heart, uh, you want to do that. I had a, a situation here recently that came to my attention, and it was a request to mediate a... Uh, uh, a, uh, a separate maintenance agreement. They, they, they weren't quite ready to get the divorce. So they came in and said, you know, we, we'd like to have a separate maintenance agreement. And for the folks who don't know what a separate maintenance agreement is, it's basically the same thing as a divorce. You divide the assets, the liabilities, you have parenting time, all the other things, except you don't call it a divorce. You call it a separate maintenance agreement. And it means living apart. And uh, you live apart for the rest of your life. There's some other legal ramifications in terms of wills and inheritance and, and so on. We won't go there today on that. But uh, the, um, the Catholic Church is, is, is uh, uh, concerned with that because they don't want to have a divorce. You have annulments and, and so on. But that's another issue. It's, it's, it's more frequent among Catholics uh, on that. And this couple came to me the, the other day and... <clears throat> They had been, they're in their 50s. They've been married 20 years. They have a 16 and 17 year old uh, girls. And uh, they had been living in misery, would you believe, for 10 years, count them, 10 years in misery. Uh, wh why they were not on Valium, alcohol, or whatever, I don't know. But apparently they were able to escape that. And they had gone to their pastors. They had gone to their church councils. They had gone to professionals and the couple that uh, Kathy was talking about, by the way, in the introduction, they had gone to, uh, I don't know, three or four or five counselors and, and so on. And they said meeting with you guys for a couple hours was well, was, was better money spent than three years in therapy or something like that. So these folks, anyway, they had been in counseling and, and the, the, the whole, it went on for 10 years. And just keep in mind, as you think about this, this, this agony for 10 years, what uh, Einstein said about doing the same thing over and over again for 10 years, what does that prove except insanity? 
So the, uh, uh, the the husband though came in and he said, "Well, I want a separate maintenance agreement for 90 days." What does that mean? He didn't want a separate maintenance agreement. He just wanted a, a cooling off period. He wanted a, a, a small separation uh, so that he could, uh, uh, could quote, work on it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the wife was much more serious. She, she wanted a, a healthy, a, uh, she wanted unconditional love. And I think the most important thing that she wanted was the honesty and the honest communication was with her husband. And I looked at the husband and asked, you know, can you give that to your wife? And there was that silence. Um, and uh, so I delved a little bit further and, and, and to find out what does, what does the wife want? What does the husband want? And uh, you can see from the conversation what the wife wanted what the husband wanted. And I it, looked at the husband and sort of said, you're like the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, or maybe Steve Covey for you more uh, business oriented people. You have to have the end in mind to get to your goal. And uh, I think his end in mind was just continuing uh, where he was and the wife wanted the healthy relationship. So they had to come to a decision. They had to come make up, make up their mind, perhaps one of three options that they, uh, that they had available to them. And again, they had to be realistic in terms of the facts. Mm -hmm. Is the husband going to change? A 50 year old man in the habit of doing the same thing, is he really going to change? 50 year old woman, is she going to change in terms of her expectation as to the marriage, what she's willing to give and contribute to the marriage? Is that going to happen? I say 50 year old woman or 50 year old couple, maybe a 23 year old couple, I'm not sure, you know, I have not seen any major changes in behavior. Uh, yes, every once in a while, again, going to the couple that Kathy was talking about at the top of the program, that those folks worked on their stay marriage for years, literally, and they met with us on monthly basis, I think, or bi-monthly basis to check up what was their progress Mm -hmm. to uh, maybe, uh, you know, be scolded a little bit. You're not working hard enough. But anyway, uh, few change. It's, 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 it's remarkable. So the choices she had uh, or the couple had is remain the same and hope that somehow that there will be an epiphany, a lightning strike or something that will change the, uh, uh, or they could do a trial separation, some type of a separate maintenance agreement, whatever label you have it. But what happens there is that the husband still has a hook on the wife. You know, she, the wife is really not free and clear to do what she wants to do. She still has a, that ball and chain around her ankle called the husband until, you know, some, some forever or some later date, there's still that communication. And the other alternative, of course, is, is the divorce. And not that I encourage, not that I'm in favor of the divorce, but sometimes that just is the only solution or that's the practical solution, the realistic solution. You ask me to be real and that's what it comes down to be realistic. What does this fact, this honest fact situation lead you to? Do the same, the trial separation, or do you do a divorce? There is no hook, either by the husband holding on to the wife or the wife having the husband holding on to her ankle. The husband has an opportunity though, if he's really going to work on his, his I don't want to say behavior, but on his lifestyle, his pattern or so on, he has the opportunity to do that. He can go to therapy, he can go to deep therapy, he can go to psychotherapy, whatever he needs to do and he can demonstrate to his wife that he's serious about it. He also has a chance to re romance the wife, you know, they, at, at one time they were dating, right? For 10 years, the first 10 years, it was, you know, a honeymoon and something happened. But, you know, that the, if, if the husband is really serious, uh, they can rekindle. And then the wife, again, being realistic can say, even at the best, can the husband do this? And whatever the husband does, do I still want that type of a husband? Do I still want that? She is free to make the choice. And we know that... Uh, 
uh, many people, I don't know many people, but uh, there's a substantial number of people who do marry their previous spouses. I know some people, friends of mine intimately, who have remarried their previous spouses. So, you know, it, it does happen if he can really do the change and be realistic with what you as expect from your spouse and spouse be realistic in what you can give to your spouse. And if you go back to item number one, if you're honest with yourself, you can say, I don't want to do it. I can't do it. And maybe it is better to divorce rather than the separation agreement and better than the, uh, uh, the, than the staying the same. So there is your, your opportunity to be realistic. Yeah. No facts, not facts as you want them to be. Yeah. Thank you for that. That is so very important because like this couple that you speak of, they have wasted 10 years. Uh, there may have been some promises or something's going to change and it never has. So you need to look at what people are doing, not what they're going to say. Not that they're going to say, I'm going to come back and we're going to be together and things will be better. I'll go get therapy or whatever. You need to step back and say, okay, it's really, you're going to have to show me before I can change my mind to divorce. So many times couple will do this back and forth, this volleying back and forth. We're getting a divorce. No, we're not getting a divorce. And this attempt, I know I did it myself of going back and forth, just believing that, hoping that things could work out. But how vitally important it is that we are honest, that we are realistic. Uh, when you come back together, nothing will have changed. All of the problems are still going to be there. So unless you are willing, like the couple that Peter and I spoke about, who to really get in there and do the hard work, uh, to save this marriage, it is possible. But boy, when those years have gone by, and I have had so many therapists, so many, several, a handful, my own included, say, you know, you're here 10 years too late. And that is typically the case when people go and seek therapy. So thank you for that, Peter. Uh, the third point that we want to talk about today is to get help. Get help in this decision. This is something that you need someone to listen to you, to help you strategize, to help you be honest and realistic with yourself as well. So that may be a therapist, that may be a pastor, that may be a dear friend, that may be myself as a divorce coach. But I want to give you a heads up and a warning. Sometimes you are going to go into a church setting or a therapy setting and they are going to encourage you, no matter what the issues are, to go back to the marriage. In fact, they may even shame you and tell you, you need to go back to the marriage. And I just want to encourage you to get help, but make sure that you are getting the right help. If someone is shaming you or scolding you or directing you and telling you what to do, you need to find someone else who is going to allow you to make your decision that is going to affect the rest of your life. I have worked with and I have heard of too many people who the church has said, go back and be married. Go back to your husband. Go back to your wife. When there were some serious issues there that could not be resolved to the detriment of those individuals. Now, I realize Nobody likes divorce. I don't know of any church that likes divorce or encourages divorce. It is a necessary evil sometimes. And you need help, but you need to have the right help so you can be the one making those decisions, not out of shame, not out of blame, but the right decision for you. So get help, but be careful who you are listening to in this very, very important. If you wasted 10 years, like the couple that Peter just mentioned, you don't want to waste any more time. You don't want to waste another 10 years. I have worked with individuals who have come to me and forgave their spouse for having an affair. And then it happened again. And my response to them is, I don't want to see you five years from now. 
going through this same situation. I don't want to see you 10 years from now when you are 10 years older because you do not deal honestly and realistically with the situation that is put in front of you. So I, I say this with true concern for you and your future and your life. And many of you will say, well, I'm just going back. I'm going to stop the divorce for my kids. I have to wonder what your kids are witnessing in the home that shows them what a healthy marriage is. So again, you need help. If that's what you're doing is, is not deciding to continue your divorce because of the kids, you need someone to walk you through that. Not in shame and blame, but to walk you through that, to ask you some poignant questions such as, what are your children seeing in the home that is healthy for them if you were to go back to the marriage? So lots of heavy content here, but I want to make uh, the final comment or the, the final point and, and give this one to Peter to discuss of not being the wishy-washy, of really making a decision. And once you do, it's going to be much easier to move forward. Peter? Kathy, let me just uh, uh, step on to your point number three when you say get help. I think one of the things that I find in most of these uh, situations is that people are afraid of the unknown. What is going to happen if I get the divorce? And in this situation that we were talking about, the, uh, the wife was very hesitant because she wasn't sure of what her financial security was going to be. She wasn't sure what, what, what was going to happen in church because they were very church oriented. And, uh, you know, to the point of, you know, what do I tell the pastor? What do I tell the people in the congregation? So financially, uh, who, how to take care of the children, what support group you're going to have, your employment, uh, you know, your so just all of those things to get some sort of help that will help you project what is going to happen in the future once the divorce comes. And we talked about this with this lady this afternoon, and she said something, I will enjoy my life like I did when I was in my early 20s. So get the help, figure out what is going on. And then, as Kathy said, you've got to make a decision. We, we sort of, I, I keep saying bad news does not get better with time. You know, I know, we all know when it is time to, to make the decision to move forward on the divorce. If you don't move forward, you just continue the hemorrhaging of emotions, the bleeding. Uh, but if you want to do that, you know, that's your choice. The unfortunate thing is that... Uh, the impact, as Kathy said, on the children and the uh, and your relatives, your in-laws, your parents, your uh, cousins, brothers, and sisters. You know what happens if you're invited to uh, Thanksgiving dinner and this tension continues on? What do you think that's happening to your parents during the this this uh, this uh, Thanksgiving dinner? Is that fun for them? And then most important is that Kathy has a program where she had a workshop as divorce screws up your children. Mm -hmm. And I think I would like to have a little appendix to that. It says not getting a divorce screws up your children. And as I told these folks, maybe you cannot be good husband and wife, but you better aren't better be good mother and dad to the children. So make the decision cut the hemorrhaging, and go on forward. And you have the little uh, little lifesaver that's in the back. If things work out right, if everybody does what they promised to do, you can always get remarried. It's easier to get married than it is to get a divorce. Yeah, very good point. So I, I hope that something within this conversation has been helpful to you. Uh, I don't know where you're at. Obviously, there's such a variety of where people are at that I work with. Some are just finding out about it. Some are in the middle of it. Some are over it and still need to deal with some things. So let me just repeat, as you are, if you are doubting your decision to divorce, 
of course, I, and I know Peter would love to see your marriage restored. Love to see that. But I want you to be honest. I want you to be realistic. I want you to get help and help have someone to work you through this. And then eventually you're going to have to make that decision. You can't be wishy-washy. You need to make that decision. I know it's a hard one. I know it's a painful one. But there's also an amazing God who offers us wisdom. If you need wisdom, we all do. Ask God and it will be given to you. He'll not rebuke you for asking, but be sure that your faith is in him alone. He can and will guide you when you open up and say, God, give me wisdom. But he cares for you. He cares for you above caring for the covenant of the divorce. And that's where some churches get confused. He cares for you. So I hope this has been of help. I uh, Please let me know if I can be of help. Peter, thank you for joining us. You have a thousand stories and I should have you on some other time and we should just tell the stories of people's lives that we have had the privilege of walking with in mediation because uh, we see people make good decisions and we see people make bad decisions and their motives are, um, are interesting to see and they're not always the purest of motives or the, the motives that are going to help them move forward into a better life. With that, uh, we will call it a night. Peter, thank you once again. You're welcome and good night, Kathy. Good night. So this is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous and I appreciate you being with us tonight. Let me know how I can be of help. Have a good evening and I am here to walk with you every step of the way through the trauma of divorce. Good evening.